Hi, this is Homai from Spitfire Audio with a video on our symphonic extras, which are harp, harpsichord, cymbalum, and grand orchestral piano. And I put a demo together for you to show you how they can work together. This one is actually a contextual one, so I've used symphonic strings there as well. And I really enjoyed the combination of these different instruments having all the shorts and plucked sounds. So I'm going to play this demo through first. Then I'm going to go through the individual libraries and show you around. So, first off, I've used the harp library, and the articulation here is called the flageolet. It has this lovely muted sound to it. But we also have the normal sound. This one is the pré de la table. This one's called Slid. So this one has been recorded and programmed in a way so that if you have the instrumentalist playing glissando, that you actually have the sliding from one string to the next. Over here you have Bispigliando. Which you can control with dynamics and expression. And then you also have effects here. So I have two channels here. I just kept adding rhythms and little parts as I was moving along. There's another part to this library, which is called Harposphere, but I'm going to get to that in a bit. I'm going to first move over to Symbolum. Also has been recorded at Air Studios. It's a very similar layout. Then you also have your dynamics and tremolo. So again, if you go to tremolo over here, you can control that. I've also added a logic echo on there. I didn't want to have the full signal, so I put it on a bus. I have it in quarter notes here. So for this piece, I imagine to have these subtle little repetitive lines and rhythms coming from different angles. As I'm moving on, you can see that I'm just basically layering different sounds and different pluck notes, adding to the spectrum. Layered on top of that, I have the grand piano. Again, this also has been recorded at Air Studios to be really part of that collection of instruments. And it sits right in the middle of everything, which is the beauty of this kind of groups of instruments that we have here for the symphonic extras. You're probably familiar now with this GUI layout. Something that you have for the piano, though, is the pedal dynamic. You can turn that down. 
further up. And it really just brings in that little bit of realism to it as well. I'm using the direct sync note, but you also have a tape signal here. Again, just building up sort of pattern by pattern. <laughs> Then I moved on to the harpsichord. So this one looks just a little bit different in the articulations. Uh, we've recorded the lower range and the upper range, so low eight, high eight, and a combination of those. For this one, I'm using the same echo delay, which I've got on bus two. So I mentioned the haposphere earlier, which is based on the same principle as to what I'm be showing you now with the harpsichord, where we created a folder with synthesized sounds. So it, it works in the way that we use the instrument as a sound source and then warp them and stretch it and put it through different effect spots and you come out with some really lovely sounds. So these are the ones for uh, the harpsichord. I've actually used one that sounds very string-like. Just to demonstrate a few other ones. This comes in a slightly different GUI. You have more effects that you can play around with. You have to attack, decay, sustain, and release over here. Low pass, high pass filters. And I really like this guy. And also to play with these guys. So you can really modulate these sounds. Jumping over to the haposphere. Also creating another folder full of really incredible sounds. For this particular demo, I actually also used one that acts as a bass. Some really cool sounds in there. So that was a quick glance at all the symphonic extras that we have. And there's so much more that you can do with them. I just want to go through the symphonic strings as well, just to complete what I've done with the demo here. I added to that first uh, cello line. So everything else that I had in there. I then added some longs to this one. So I wanted to use lots of different textual sort of sounds. And we really did go in when recording this library and made sure we've got loads of different articulations. So this one, for example, is a sol tester that I've used. Here you got some really lovely harmonics. Again, some soltastos for the violin twos.
Here I've got some trills. I was adding those. I wanted to make sure I've got all these different textures in there and then sort of coming in and out throughout the piece, just sort of more interwoven. That's why I really enjoyed the patch from the harpsichord because it just gives you another texture again and the way I've panned everything, it sort of comes from different angles. And then of course I wanted to use the shorts of the string instruments too. So I've got some spiccato and colenios, uh, some brush sounds, again trying to keep these different textures in there as well. Uh, one more thing that I've added is a lot of splosh. So I've got a lexicon here where I've used, again, the large hole. Really like to use this one. And then I also used a precision limiter at the very end to give it a bit of a boost. Let's listen back to the piece again. I think the symphonic extras make up a really nice family of instruments and I hope the demo gave you a bit of an insight of what you can do with it. If you have any questions though, you can put them underneath. If you haven't subscribed yet, you can do so. And if you want to be notified, you can also press that bell button. And otherwise, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time.